FlexSeal has been a leading manufacturer of residential and recreational vehicle seating since they banned production in 1901. In this production area, they manufacture parts in batch sizes of up to a thousand parts at a time. This creates a variety of non-value-added touches and material handling distances between the functional spaces, along with a large work-in-process storage of parts and a buildup of unneeded inventory. This is $800,000 worth of width. Next, we're going to move on to the methodology. Now, this project can be split up into two parts, the first of which being the redesigned metals manufacturing cell and then the macro plant layout. For the metal cell, we began by dividing up all of FlexSteel's current product offering into eight product families grouped together by similar product type. These eight families were then placed into five separate cells based on similar manufacturing requirements, and the new metal cell was created so product can flow through one of these five cells as opposed to the previous job shop format. Regarding the macro plant layout, we began by identifying all of the key activity areas in the plant and then prioritized which areas should be close to each other and which should be very far apart. We then assigned the necessary spaces to each of these areas and created a final plant layout based on the prioritized areas and information given to us by FlexSteel. By building a new facility, moving to a cellular layout, and moving to smaller batch sizes, FlexSteel will have the financial benefits of a first year cost realization of $3.2 million and annual savings of $672,000. The first year cost realization of about $3.2 million is achieved through the reduction of space requirements for the new facility and the reduction in inventory holding needs. The annual savings of about $672,000 is achieved through labor restructuring and the elimination of obsolescent events. The most important results of the project are responsiveness and the transformational change. In the current state, the earliest customers could receive their order is 36 days after placing. Lengthy lead times make building to order difficult and customers are more likely to buy from other manufacturers who can meet tighter deadlines. However, in the future state, by decreasing the metal shop lead time from 21 days to 5 days, customers will only need to wait 20 days. This reduction in lead time makes FlexSteel more responsive and makes them therefore more competitive in their industry. Hi, my name is Alex Easton. I, along with Patrick Egan, Nick Elms, and Sammy Larson, are Group 1 for the Spring 2020 IMSE Capstone at Iowa State University. Our company operates a machine with five to six operators on four shifts in a block-style rotation. The station layout is as follows. One, two, two B, three, and four, which is shown here. The company expressed concerns about large amount of worker idle time on the line, ergonomic hazards at station four, and wanted to investigate if installing a grinder would be feasible. To assess the ergonomic issues at station four, the team conducted a REBA analysis on six tasks that had the largest potential risk associated with them. The packaging of white and clear rolls were observed and recorded to study and perform the analysis. Any position with a score of eight or above is considered high risk and should be changed immediately. Two positions received a high risk score. Banding the white is shown on the left, which received an eight because of the bending and reaching required. The bagging of clear shown on the right received a nine, the biggest issue with this position is the safety risk of standing on the thin edge of the elevated conveyor and the reaching. In this video, you can see how the operator needs to bend and reach in order to get to the banding pass through under the pallet. Here is now the same task being performed but with the aid of the tool we designed. For this, we created a prototype out of simple materials such as PVC piping and duct tape. The operator starts by clipping the banding into the tool then pushes the tool in and around the bottom of the pallet. As you can see, the operator does not need to bend and reach on the pallet or squat down to get to the banding anymore. After considering all of the factors previously mentioned, the team has decided the most viable solution for the company is to install the grinder, remove one station from the line, and purchase ergonomic improvements such as a step for the conveyor, tape guns, grip tape, and the custom banding tool. All in, this would cost the company around $450,000 but would have a three-year net present value of just over a million dollars and a corresponding IRR of 144%. By implementing these solutions, the company will move towards the sustainability goals, reduce downtime for operators, improve safety, and cut costs.